Amanda, my congratulations to you, a little bit late, I know, on being elected the 793rd Mayor of Bath. Um, you missed out on your ceremony. I know. Um, we had a nice um, uh, Zoom call and we did it all virtually. Um, it absolutely wasn't the same in any way as having the ceremony, but in many ways it was quite intimate and it was just me and the Charter Trustees. Um, and it, it was a different way of doing things, but I think that's what we've all had to do, isn't it? Under these circumstances, try and find a way of doing things different, differently. So I'm trying to persuade myself it's different, not worse. <laughs> but what I have to say, bearing in mind that you were Deputy Mayor last year, it must be fresh in your mind, that procession to the Abbey and the procession away. Is, is it very unusual for, for two people to sort of swap roles because yeah. Jerry now becomes... <laughs> Uh, deputy mayor and you become mayor you've sort of swapped positions it is I mean I don't know um, if there's actually a precedent for the for, for the two positions to be swapped ever and it's certainly not normal that the deputy mayor becomes the mayor the year after but we are in slightly unprecedented times so Jerry and I worked well together last year I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't work well together this year as well so I think given the fact that what we're trying to do is is keep some continuity going when a lot of stuff that used to be considered normal is no longer there I don't think it's a bad thing that we've done. Well you of course would normally on a Monday be looking into your full diary what am I opening today who am I welcoming to Bath tomorrow um, are, you, are you without a diary are, are you without events to put your chain on for? I, uh, As you may be able to see I have my little pins here yes. so for the moment that I have to put the chain on I will but obviously we keep it locked away for insurance purposes um what I'm finding is I am doing quite a lot of stuff but it has to be self-generated so normally the mayor's office would be getting lots of emails as you rightly say saying um can you host such and such a thing can you chair such and such an AGM that's not happening not because people aren't inviting the mayor it's because those events just aren't happening uh, some of them are happening via zoom but a lot of them just aren't happening so what I've got to do is say, right, my job as mayor, I think, is to be as visible and as positive as I can be under these circumstances. So twice a week, I'm going and having um, what we call my bench sessions. So I'm sitting on a bench in different wards throughout Bath, and just talking to anyone who wants to come along and talk to me. Um, and then doing a little bit of a walkabout around the area. That's gone very well. I'm, I was about to call you, actually, in, uh, with another of your roles, which you now no longer do. I am phoning all the mayor's guides and making sure that we keep that, that relationship and that enthusiasm for what is a wonderful thing going. I'm speaking to our twinning associations. I'm doing videos to send out to various places. I've launched a photographic competition. I'm going to do a big symposium on loneliness next year, which we're starting to do the planning for now. So I have to say my diary is full, but it's full of not the sort of things that were happening last year. I have this vision of you sitting on a bench in your full regalia. It's not happening quite like that. It's on the bench with my chain and with um, someone standing quite close in case anyone thinks that that chain looks a little bit too attractive. Um, but no, the full regalia is all locked up in the guild hall. You... That's, that's funny you were talking about the procession and I, I didn't. I would have loved that. I would have loved to smile and wave and... And, and to meet lots of people and to shake their hands and to make all those connections. But actually, this is going to sound a little bit, I don't know, selfish. Um, the thing that I'm really missing is I've never had a chance to put the regalia on. Oh. There's no photo of me in it. I've never worn it. And I think the weight of being the 793rd Mayor of Bath probably comes home to you the moment you put that robe on. And that, I, I mean, I think I feel it, but I think I really feel it when I got the opportunity to do that. Amanda, we'll keep our fingers crossed it's as, as soon as possible. And, and I'm sure in the queue to be vaccinated, I think the mayor should go first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, like needles, but no, you're right, I shall do it. <laughs> um, you mentioned the mayor's guide. Um, my reasons for stepping yeah. back is just I'm developing my website. I am expressing an opinion, which I never did when I was a paid journalist. And I, I just feel that because... I am expressing opinions, I should step back from that. But uh, the word on the block is that hopefully some sort of guiding uh, can be undertaken a little later this year. 
I, I'm not pressing you on that, but... I mean, we are, I mean, Joy and the committee are looking into it. Um, we absolutely won't start until it's safe to do so for both the guys and for the people taking the walks. Um, and yeah, I, I believe that some of the paid for guides have already started. Um, we're, we're dealing with volunteers. Um, it's a very different, you know, we do an amazing, as you know, it's an amazing job. TripAdvisor always gives it five stars. We, we don't want to start in a way that, that doesn't attain those high standards. So we will start as soon as we can, but it has to be safe and it has to be right. Yeah, well said. You mentioned your theme for the year, combating loneliness, bath of friendly city. Yeah. How apt, after months of lockdown, there must be lots of, of lonely people at the moment. Well, it's, it is really bizarre because I, I sort of knew I was going to be mayor towards the end of last year, but obviously the stuff is, and I chose my theme and I wrote my speech then. Well, we hadn't actually heard the word COVID or coronavirus or pandemic or anything. So at the time, I thought it was something that I was very interested in and something that we needed to look at. But you're so right. It is so at the forefront of people's minds now. Um, it, it, in both ways, A, there are some people who have suffered real loneliness. And I think, although predominantly people think it is an old person's thing, it can be, but it actually impacts lots and lots and lots of people. And it's not just people who live on their own. Some very lonely people can be people who feel isolated and not connected if they're in a group of people. So it, it, it's the whole thing. And what I've been delighted with during the coronavirus, because there has to be some good coming out of it, is the amount of community work that's been done from people, not just on a practical, can I get your prescription, can I get your food type level, but on a, I'll give you a ring tomorrow, just see how you're doing. And that's what it's about. It's about creating those connections, I believe. Your message then to the good people of Bath is where you can do a good deed for someone, you know, go out and do it. It is, it is the just be kind. And I finished my mayoral acceptance speech with the first law of forensics, which is um, in every interaction, you leave something behind and you take something away, which is what they use when they're looking at crime. So it's not great if you're trying to get away with a crime, obviously. But I, I like to take that in real life. So every interaction, you try and leave something behind, whether it's a kind word, a smile, a compliment, a bit of help. And also you take something away yourself because you feel better for having done it or you've learned something or, or whatever. And I think if people start thinking of themselves as more connected as opposed to, I, I just want to look after myself and, I, and I'm very separate. It, you know, society, community, call it what you will, really, really benefits and everyone within it does. Um, is that something you would like to see come out of this situation? Um, um, I, I have to say, and I'm blowing my own trumpet here, that I, I write a column for the Bath magazine, end of commercial, but uh, they've <laughs> just published uh, an edition uh, which you can read online. A lot of people have been asked, what sort of Bath would you like to see after this? I wonder if I could put that to you. I don't know whether you want to answer as Manda or as Councillor Manda or as Madam <laughs> Mayor, but I'll leave that to you. I'll, can I do all three? Yes. Madam <laughs> Mayor wants to um, make sure that the things that are good, i.e. The, um, the, the connections that have been made and the community spirit um, remain. Councillor Amanda wants to make sure that the things that are good remain. But on the, with the councillor hat on, that's more around the, the improvements in air quality, the, the, the fact that more people have been doing walking and cycling, the, the sort of stuff that people have commented on about, you know, I've been able to hear the birds sing, I've been able to, taking a little bit of, of slowness in their life and doing that stuff, not to rush back to what was a normal, which I don't believe will become our, our normal again, but, but not to do that unthinkingly. So that's the, the councillor answer. And, and, and me, I think I've learned, I think I always knew, but I absolutely think I've learned my lesson about what personally is important to me. Because when I was thinking that lockdown was being raised, I wasn't going, oh, it's brilliant. I can, I, I can save up and go on a Caribbean cruise. You know, there was none of that stuff. I wanted to meet a friend and have a cup of tea with them in the Hoban Cafe. That to me is, it's the little things like that that mean so much. So I think I always did appreciate my friends, but I think I've got an even bigger appreciation of them now. And I want, I want to retain that and not get so busy that they slide down my priorities. You, you and I had a little conversation a few days ago after I 
I, I publicly said that uh, one of the negatives of lockdown is that I found myself looking forward to meals. And it wasn't necessarily because I was hungry, but it was something that was helping to fill in my day. And then I discovered where my partner had hidden the scales mm -hmm. and gave myself a big shock. Oh, and man. you came through and said, that was something you were a little guilty of. <clears throat> um, you know, um, enjoying the odd snack may be a bit too much. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, should, should we be saying to the good people of Bath, get out there and get active or, or what? Well, yeah. It's awful, isn't it? I don't really like telling anyone how they should live their lives. No, but, so. but um, I, I think I don't think we're unusual, Richard. I think there's a lot of people who thought I need to give myself a treat. And sometimes treat equals food. And I'm very well aware of the fact that I've put, I've put weight on and I'm, you know, I used to do 10,000 steps a day really easily. There are some days when I've done 200 and I'm tempted to put my phone on the top of the tumble dryer and get it to make it look like I've done more steps. So <laughs> did I say that out loud? I did. I? Um, so I am, and I know myself well enough to know that unless I make any public commitments, I don't do it. I, it's not about how I look. It's not about body image. It's not, I don't feel as fit as I did when I went into that and I don't like that feeling and I think I want to do something about it and if the people of Bath want to join in I think that would be a good thing. Well we've, we've got all this glorious countryside around us and if we live in the city we've got a, a beautiful city to explore um, which is my way of saying support the museums, the shops and everything yeah. else. Um, let's get out there and see if we can lose a few pounds. You and I will check in with each other in a month or so. I will hold you responsible and you hold me responsible. And I think that's the way to do it. I mean, as mayor, when we did open, I have popped into the museums as they open, the shops when they open and everyone, just to welcome them back. And everyone is so, well, first of all, they're quite pleased to see someone from the city of Bath is acknowledging them. But also they're so pleased to be back. They're so pleased with that. And so many of them have made so many efforts to make it feel incredibly safe, incredibly safe. So I totally understand that some people may have lost confidence and they want to stay in the flat and that, that, that's fine. But if people are even vaguely considering it, I would say, put your mask on, go and have a look out. Because Bath is a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, and there are people out there who are, who are dying to interact with you again. Yes, yeah, stay safe. But um, you, you must be very proud to be the 793rd Mayor of Bath. Does it show? <laughs> girl, girl, from a, girl from a not particularly well-off background in Bolton, I've not done bad, have I? I, I am unbelievably proud and honoured and humbled and all the words that sound like politician words, but they really aren't. I, you know, I, and part of the reason I chose the theme was that I want... The whole, the whole sentence of the theme is combating loneliness, Bath the friendly city. So if I do get to a stage where I can talk to my counterparts in other cities, not only will I talk about Bath, about what you said, the beautiful countryside around it, the shops, the historic environment, the museums, I'll also talk about the people, because I think that's what also makes it special. So I am I'm unbelievably proud that I've done this. I, I, I still, when I, when I pick up the phone, I say, oh, oh, oh I, I, I'm just the mayor. What do you mean you're just the mayor? I've not quite... I've not quite got it. I think the moment I put the whole stuff on, I'll go, right, that's it. It's me. <laughs> Madam Mayor, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. My absolute pleasure. Thank you, Richard.